Okay, so let's get started. Um, actually, John's going to be teaching this lecture, but I'm just going to start off with the uh, announcements and go over a little bit of the feedback that we collected from last time. So lecture codes on this slide here. Um, I think from now on, we're probably going to only release lecture codes in class. And uh, like I said today, John's going to go over the last bit of JavaScript. We might have a little bit left over for uh, next week that we're going to just finish up before we get into PHP, before we get into PHP and MySQL. Um, but today we're going to learn still a lot of JavaScript, a lot of jQuery. We're going to go over Ajax, um, manipulation, effects, events, and traversing. And then probably next lecture we'll finish up uh, by going over just event handlers. So we just finished a little bit of that up, um, and we'll do that next next lecture. So just some quick announcements. Mini Project Two Part Two. Um, actually, show of hands, who's finished Part Two? <laughs> okay, so it's extended to Wednesday. <laughs> All right, sorry, till Friday, till Friday. Um, and it's still due before 11:59 p.m. Friday. And there's a YouTube video tutorial up. That's not going to take you through doing all of uh, part two, but it's going to get you through most of it, get you through setting it up, um, getting most of the layout, layout um, set up, and then you're going to have to go and actually code in all the different portions of the actual uh, layout. Mini project part three, or sorry, mini project three is uh, going to be out today, and it's basically going to be to finish today's lab. So whatever you don't finish today is going to be for mini project part three, and it is due Monday. <coughs> So um, we, gave, we thought we gave you guys enough time for part two, so we're going to keep with, keep with the schedule. And if enough people don't finish by Monday, then maybe we'll move it back. But we're, we're really trying not to do that because, um, like I said, this is probably, for the most part, the last, last week of JavaScript before we get into PHP and MySQL. And um, so you guys know there's also you know, five slip days that you guys can use on whichever assignment you want. So you still have a little bit of leeway with turning in some assignments late if you have a busy schedule. Um, I'll let John explain more about Mini Project 3 later when he talks about the lab. This Wednesday, we're going to try and host an office hours, uh, maybe 7 p.m. Just another show of hands. Do you guys, who here can make it or will be interested in going to office hours 7 p.m. on Wednesday? Okay, okay then we'll probably do that. And that, um, from the feedback that we've gotten, the topics for that office hours will probably be CSS positioning. And you know, you can come in for Mini Project 2 and Mini Project 3 help as well. Is that, uh, is that the set time or is there any other time? Right now I have 7 p.m. if it's, you know, it depends on everyone else. It could be an hour earlier or an hour later. Um, is there a time that you prefer? Or an hour earlier. It depends on everyone else. Okay, well, in the chat room tonight, I'll send out an email, but in the chat room tonight, please just post, you know, what times you prefer. It will be 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., or 9 p.m. Um, for one or two hours. So hopefully it's a little bit earlier, so it's not going too late. but. I mean, it should happen Wednesday, and I will be there. I'm going to talk to John and Amber and see if they can make it. It is a little bit tough because of midterm season right now. Yes. Yeah, question. Is that related to the message you posted about having something on Saturday? Yeah, so I was going to try and have something on Saturday, but it didn't end up working out. Um, not enough people posted in the chat room, and plus we're all just really busy. So unfortunately, we had to push it to Wednesday. And in the future, we will try and schedule more definite office hours and maybe workshops, um, you know, depending on the material and if you guys feel like you need it. But you know, the only way that we really know that it's necessary is if you guys let us know either in class or via email that you'd like a little bit more um, help with whatever it is we're going on with the topic at the time. So please do that. Um, and just another quick reminder, the final project, it's not coming up super soon, but it's, it still helps to think about it a little bit. And like I said, you, act, you guys actually have most of the tools that you're gonna need to, to, do, the, to do the final project already. Um, in the meantime, you guys should think about the final project idea and you know, maybe find something that you want to work on it with. It's a two-person assignment. And that's it for announcements. Are there any questions? Um, what is, the, like, we can't do it individually? You, you can, you can work it individually. If you want to work on the mini project individually, you can. If you want to do it in a group um, with two people, you're welcome to do that. If you're super ambitious and you're doing maybe a, you know, a longer final project and you want a little bit extra help, you could, you could do up to three people. Just talk to us about it. Um, we can figure it out from there. We're pretty flexible. So feedback number one, um, here's just a summary, uh, the points that we pulled off of the feedback. And it was actually really helpful, so thank you for taking the time to submit the feedback. Um, we'll have another one. We'll add Amber's not falling off the chairs. <laughs> but um, got a little right there. Amber. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to get a piece of the Okay, so for lectures, we're going to try and uh, do a little bit of summary from the previous lecture points so we can we kind of connect the lectures a little bit. Um, it, it is really tough because we're covering a lot of material and we only have so many lectures and so much time in each lecture. So we'll, we'll do a little bit of that, but I can't you know guarantee that we can, we're going to spend a lot of time going over um, previous material. Another one of the kind of comments that we got was were that the labs are a little bit long, and I know they're a little bit long. Um, that is partially by design. We know that you're not going to be able to finish it in class, but we, you know, the general uh, motivation behind the labs is to give you enough material so you can still do something, you know, kind of at home. Um, like I said, the only way you can really learn HTML and, and web design and all these techniques is to apply them. So, you know, a, a good way to approach labs is to um, after lecture, or sorry, after our lectures, when you're sitting down and do the labs, go over it, look through all of the labs, see if there's any parts of it that you think you need help with, ask us the questions in class, and then, you know, kind of work from there. And if you have questions on the lab, still so feel, feel free to email us. Um, we're going to try and maybe do some more group work, some more live examples uh, in lecture. I think John has a couple today. For the mini project, uh, we'll look at doing a couple more screencasted assignments. So mini project three isn't screencasted right now. We might put together a little bit of material, um, kind of, you know, uh, secondary material to help you guys with mini project three. And uh, I already talked about this, we'll have office hours and workshops. Um, and additional resources, we'll try and um, maybe put together a Photoshop tutorial, maybe a list of resources, like websites to visit, uh, maybe some books. There's actually a book listed in our syllabus that we never brought up, but it's there if you want to check that out. Um, some sort of like the work worksheets and maybe some syntax cheat sheets for HTML and CSS. So if we miss anything um, on this list, just send us another email and let us know. Are there any questions or comments? Can I get the PowerPoint to work? Uh, you guys have to oh, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I'll let John help you with that. Um, so feedback, so more feedback is about the lectures um, and some opportunities and stuff. I will try and provide more examples in my lecture slides. And um, someone brought this up. I was missing for a couple of classes. I've been missing because I've been traveling for, for business. So I come back kind of on um, like Saturday night and I put together lectures for Monday. Um, but I shouldn't be traveling too much later after that. Amber is going to talk slower. Um, <laughs> John is going to be more engaging. And if you guys have any other comments, please let us know. We're not. We're not ashamed, so let us know. And opportunities, actually, funny thing, kind of last semester, we had a couple um, opportunities come up. Like uh, Zappos came to talk to us, a couple of recruiters. Um, this is kind of a unique decal, so I thought that was pretty cool. There were, well, there are no recruiters this season, uh, this semester. And I think it's just because, you know, it's not right before summer. But if you guys are interested in, in learning more about, um, I guess, how to monetize web design, Talk to Amber, or Alex, or me, or John, and uh, we're working on a couple projects. But also, we've done some freelance work in the past, so we can maybe give you some pointers on that. Um, and that's it for feedback. Are there any questions before I hand it over to John? Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to start off with like going over a review of some of the slides that uh, Alex went over last week. Um, so we first, want to start talking about what the motivation is for using Ajax, or sorry, using JavaScript. And the reason why we want to use JavaScript is we want to be able to change certain things on the web page after the web page has been loaded to us. So um, we have an example, which is like our own website, where we are able to move the fishes around after the page is loaded by using um, JavaScript. And Google does the same thing now with their search, um, in that you can just type anything into the search bar and it instantly searches uh, based off any key press. Okay, so uh, what is JavaScript? Um, Alex talked to you guys about how JavaScript is a client-side scripting service. And uh, what that means is that the code is all located on the local machine. So whoever your users are, yeah, the JavaScript code that you write will be sent to them um, in its raw format. And the difference, um, and that's sort of opposed to server-side, which is um, code that lies on the server and is never transmitted to the users at all. Um, in this case, like later on, we're going to be learning about PHP, and PHP is a server-side um, uh, technology. So, 
So um, as we know already, JavaScript, allow JavaScript allows us to manipulate things, to traverse things, to um, add effects. Um, it allows us to do um, asynchronous calls, uh, which I'm going to talk about later. And um, that's what you'll, sorry. Yeah, um, and once again, JavaScript is everywhere, um, like in the Google homepage. So um, one important thing to note is how JavaScript does this. And it does this by looking at the HTML documents. And it looks at the HTML documents by, by parsing everything into sort of a tree format. And what we call this is the DOM tree. So the DOM tree specifies how HTML elements have like parents and they each have children and then the elements have their children and so on and so forth. And by having this sort of document structure, we're able to traverse things um, by using JavaScript. Um, and as you saw in like the jQuery selections, you can select things by, um, by uh, uh, CSS parameters, right? And by doing so, it makes it a lot easier for us to manipulate um, HTML objects after the page is loaded. So a uh, review on jQuery. Um, if you don't remember, uh, the way jQuery selects elements is by uh, starting with the dollar sign and then in parentheses and it has a single quote where you insert uh, some sort of CSS attribute. And uh, in the case here, um, in part two, we have a, we're selecting paragraphs. And um, you just specify the view to select every single paragraph uh, on the web page. Uh, the other thing that Alex talked about is the adder, uh, dot adder. So when you select an element and you add a dot adder and you specify some sort of attribute, what you're able to do is you're able to either um, grab the value of the attribute that's been assigned in the document or reassign it uh, if you need to, for example, change a class of an object, right? Um, if you want to make sure that when someone clicks a button that certain elements have a different um, look to it, you can do that by having, by making sure that when that button is clicked, that it'll look at every single element that you want to change and change the attribute to some sort of class which you um, have styled in your CSS style sheets. Um, and the same thing is like is more in more specifics um, towards CSS. Um, you can like change you know single elements or whatever. Um, that you select with jQuery and just change each of the um, CSS attributes. Uh, we can also add a class and remove a class like I talked about earlier. Um, it's, this is sort of a shorthand way of doing adder with specifying um, classes. But adder, um, as you can tell, is more of a generalized thing. So um, other things you can do with dot adder is like changing the source S image SRC attribute. So if, um, if they want to like click a button to change an image, you can just use a dot .adder to change that image URL, uh, and it'll produce a new image for you on the plot. Yeah. Actually, on the previous slide, um, set properties with, can you explain the difference between the .css and the .adder? Yeah, so dot .adder is referring to HTML elements only. So um, it's that's an error. That should be .css. This should be oh. .css. We never correct. Oh, sorry. Uh, is that what you're talking about? Okay, sorry, yeah. Um, have slides. So yeah, if you guys didn't hear that, this is just a typo, this should be .css. So with the CSS, you set CSS properties. Yeah, so yeah, the main difference is CSS sets CSS properties, and .adder sets uh, HTML properties. Uh, and Alex went over a little bit of on event handling. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You have your selector, and then you add some sort of event. Um, we have a couple examples here. One is click, and the other is mouse over. And in the event, you want to be able to pass it uh, an anonymous function. Uh, in this case, we have function. This anonymous function 